Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents, we're going to take it a little bit slow this evening. It has been a tumultuous five weeks. A lot has been going on, been completing a lot of work, but I made a promise to people back in 2000. And 21, I said, hey, if you people help me with some issues, then I guarantee you I'll make it worth your while. I know that there will be some idiot out there who says I haven't fulfilled my obligation, but if you all will go ahead and pay attention to the previous video that was put up yesterday letting you guys know that the bills of exchange promissory notes drafts bankers acceptance and trade acceptances even government contracts contracts with the government that has an arbitration clause are legal tender in the United States well, I didn't just tell that to you it took me a year and a half to be able to show that to you the only problem is, see, if I had come, like I told somebody else, if I had come straight out and just told it to you guys, then a lot of people would have been running out in the middle of the street thinking that they could play with 18-wheelers. The only problem is they wouldn't have understood that 18-wheelers don't come down that street. So they'd be sitting on the middle of the street waiting for something to happen and nothing would be happening. And that's what everybody has been doing. If you think you're going to get all the information in one shot with me, then you're out of your mind. Do you guys know how tiring this is for me? How much energy I spend, expend. I love the word expend as opposed to spend. There is a lot of fatigue with this. And I promise you, today I am overwhelmingly and the word overwhelmed is used purposely exhausted but and some of you who listen to the videos you can hear it in the voice it's not stress it's just fatigue it's real fatigue look ladies and gentlemen we have redone that promissory note that we told you about it includes that new information that we told you about. We're not going to talk about it here. You're going to go and you're going to do the reading. Here at the bottom we put this right here. Because you're going to rely on the Federal Reserve Act. And the two acts that are mentioned in the March 9, 1933 Act. See, it mentions Federal Reserve Act and Presidential Proclamation 2039. We are going to stick to that paragraph. We're not going to deviate from that paragraph. Why? Let me do this for you guys. We're going to break it down just a little bit. You know, I got to open up a different browser because I don't feel like pausing y'all. And I know that one of those has emails open. And we don't want y'all seeing nobody's communication with me. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen. S-T-A-T-U-T-E. At... L A R G E is Prima, Prima, P R I M A. Fassi, Fossi, yeah, Prima Fossi. Evidence. And it's going to tell you of what the law is. Official codes are published by the government. <laughs> no, they're not. Official codes are published by Congress, not the government, not the executive branch. That's what people don't get. Congress creates the laws. Uh, they are prima facie evidence of the law unless reenacted as positive law form, which has happened to part of the U.S. Code. Really? Where'd they get that junk from? Where did that rule come from? I don't remember the people voting on that. We, we're not going to talk about all the ins and outs. We just want you guys to understand what 
We don't care about prima facie, what does it mean? It means at first sight. You don't believe me? Love at first sight. Sufficient to establish a fact or raise a presumption unless disproved or rebutted. Ladies and gentlemen, prima facie just means at first appearance. See, they don't tell you what it means. It may be used as an objective meaning. Well, why not just give us the meaning? Why give us all of these other obscure meanings? I didn't think it was going to do that, but it did, didn't it? <laughs> we don't care about prima facie evidence. We, oh, I'm sorry. You see how I put statute at large? And everything it focused on was prima facie evidence. Whoa, where is that? I saw statutes at large for a second. Positive law codification. Don't care about any of that. Uh, let's get rid of this part right there. Um, let's do that. Okay. And this one does the exact same thing with Prima Fasti. They won't give us Oh, prima facie is not law, ladies and gentlemen. It never was. Go and take a look at the so-called instrument that the people wrote. Congress did not write the Constitution. Oh, yes, they did. We got proof that Congress wrote the Constitution. Ladies and gentlemen, let me do you a favor. Let me explain this again. I did it the other day. I'm going to do it again this time. So I'm hoping that y'all going to pay attention, okay? Because it's necessary that y'all pay attention. Ladies and gentlemen, the United States is a representative government, is it not? Pay attention. United States is a representative government. Hold on. Is not the LAW. I'll just do it that way. Statute of large is not the law. Okay. What is this? That's the government information. Uh, we're going to just... I'm looking for somebody who is just going to tell it to us the way it is. Let's see. Not there, not there. No. Hold on. Let's do this right here. This is Congress. This is their help section. We don't care about public law. Ladies and gentlemen, we could care less about public laws. There's no such thing. Go and take a look at that instrument that the people wrote called the Constitution. This is a representative government. Congress doesn't get to just enact laws because they feel like it. It was always Congress having to go to the people that get approval. Just because somebody got voted into office doesn't mean that they get to do whatever they want. And that's what's been happening. Congress has been running amok, but... Hey, I'm glad that I'm one of Jehovah's Witnesses and I don't vote. Okay? And because I don't vote, well, you don't have a say. Mother, I can say whatever. Uh, excuse me. Apologize. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, that is the dumbest thing anybody could ever say. Well, because you don't vote, you don't have a say. Why? In the so-called national election, nobody's vote counts. Show me anybody's vote that counts in a national election when they're voting for a president. Go ahead. All these people talking about get out the vote. Donald Trump trying to prove that the vote was fake. He wasn't talking about the popular vote, ladies and gentlemen. He was talking about the Electoral College. And he was right. But you can't mess with the system. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is not going to show you about statutes at large. I have not seen one instance where it says statutes at large is evidence of what the law is. So let's do this. Uh, oh. Okay. And what? I tell you what, I'm not going to put is evidence of what the law is. You see how I put redemption notes? Pledge with the Secretary of the Treasury or the Federal Reserve Bank. I don't know what section 
Oh, that's judicial proceeding. So talking about pledge with the Secretary of the Treasury, I'd go look at this case, y'all, and find out. Non-transferable. Talking about savings bonds. I'd go look at that and see what this section talks about. Okay? That's why I left it up there. Not for anything other than prosperity purposes. We'll go here. I'll, I don't feel like messing with that. Uh, reliance on statute at large and congressional record. That's what I just did to get that other thing. But what we want is not reliance on statute at large. And I'll tell you, I'm glad I clicked on that so that we can talk about it. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, let's see what we can do here. Statutes at large. United States statutes at large. <sighs> now, pay attention, ladies and gentlemen. They use a code. United States Code annotated to define a statute at large. What the fly? Lord have mercy. If y'all didn't understand how the law is supposed to be made, the code is not law. So the code cannot tell you about law. That's like a five-year-old child trying to tell you how his parents were born. Because he has first-hand knowledge. Lord have mercy. Ladies and gentlemen, statutes at large shall be legal evidence of laws in all courts of the United States. So some of you haven't been paying attention to what I'm doing for you. We're going to the foundation. The foundation is the statute at large and the congressional record. Now, hold on. Remember, statutes at large is legal evidence in all courts of the United States. Take that and hold on to that. In all courts. So if the bank says you owe money and you go in there with the statute at large, you don't have to have a certified copy. It's supposed to be the law. Everybody's supposed to know it. Now, mind you, I say it's not law, but they say it is law. So let's stick with what they're saying. We don't have to argue anything. Oh, no, no. Here's the law right here. He said that my promissory note was supposed to be deposited and then given to the Treasury, and they were supposed to pay them. So let us do an investigation and find out who's not following this law. Oh, no, no, no. I don't want to hear your opinion. No, no. See, this is the statute at large. Say what? Oh, no, no. Wait, hold on. Here's the congressional record. So your opinion doesn't matter because I have the statute at large. Hold on. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, let me see if I can explain something to y'all so that y'all get it. Because sometimes... Y'all needs to understand. Oh, that was it right there, ladies and gentlemen. Individuals shall not be liable for damages for acting pursuant to a statute later declared to be invalid. Citizens and public officials have a right to accept the law as it is written until it is repealed, which it hasn't been, or judicially condemned. Doesn't matter what the judges condemn. It's not judicially condemned. It must be condemned by the judicial branch of government as unconstitutional. So instead of saying judicially condemned, it has to say unconstitutionally declared by the court. They are not required to speculate upon the validity of a statute or to act under it at their peril. Ladies and gentlemen, it's not our job to tell them whether the statute is valid or not. We operate as if it is. Let them prove it's invalid. Let them rebut the statute. But see, we're not just coming at them with any statute. We're coming at them with three different statutes at large. Well, technically two statutes at large and a presidential proclamation. Okay? So we have presidential proclamation 2039, which is mentioned in that paragraph. And then... Oh, if you don't know what paragraph I'm talking about, go back and watch the video that I did yesterday and in the previous videos I did talking about this very same subject. Sorry, those of you who want to skip to the end of the line, because that's where you're going to end up is the end of the line. So you try to skip to the front of the line, you're skipping to the end of the line. I ain't got time for y'all. I'm doing all of these hours, all of this time. No, y'all going to do your own mother, I mean, y'all going to do your own research, Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, we need you to understand something. You have the Federal Reserve Act 
that one paragraph is all you need. And after you have a Federal Reserve Act, that's a statute at large, ladies and gentlemen. Then you have the March 9, 1933 Act. That's a statute at large. Both of them are mentioned in the March 9, 1933 Congressional Record. Then you have Presidential Proclamation 2039. You have the Executive Branch and the Congressional Branch, and you have Congress telling us what their intentions were. You guys don't understand. This ain't no game. Do you understand what this does? Wait, hold on. Oh, baby. Look what you've done to me. Love, oh, you set my heart free. Ladies and gentlemen, let me see if I can help you all understand something. Again, Congress mentions Presidential Proclamation 2039. They mention the Trading with the Enemies Act. They say that they are maintaining and validating what the president did. Okay, now that we have that, now you need to pay attention. It says that your notes, drafts, bills of exchange, bankers' acceptances, pay attention, once deposited, are, you need to pay attention because some of you guys did not catch it the first time. So we're going to let you catch it the second time. Shall be receivable so they can't say that they are not an acceptable form of currency because they are receivable in all the United States for the same purposes as national United States bank notes. What is a United States bank note? Oh, you guys didn't remember what the Treasury said on their legal tender status? That they've been replaced by the Federal Reserve note? Shh, pay attention. This is just putting pieces together, people. Okay, let's see if we can give you something else to grab onto. It didn't say United States banknotes. It says national banknotes. So it's a federal bank, which is the Federal Reserve, note. That's why they got it hyphenated. They know they mean the Federal Reserve. Why do they know they mean the... Because it says notes of national banks. Circulating notes of national banks. Hold on. Let's find out. When such circulating notes are issued against securities of obligation of the United States, the amount of such obligating notes should be equal to the face value of direct obligation of the United States. So deposited as securities. No, that's not what it says. This is what it says, people. Pay attention. Upon deposit with the Treasury of the United States, any direct obligation of the United States, any notes or bills of exchange, accepted and acquired under the provisions of this act, any Federal Reserve Bank making such a deposit in the manner prescribed by the Secretary of the Treasury shall be entitled to receive from the control of the currency circulating notes in blank. Remember, Federal Reserve notes and Federal Reserve bank notes were to be used for no other purpose but to be circulated between the banks so that they can do advances between the banks. Circulating notes of the Federal Reserve Bank, the National Bank. Interesting, huh? Notes. Now you understand. So what they just told you, and you didn't pay attention yesterday and you didn't pay attention the week before, is that our style money orders, promissory notes are equal at par to the Federal Reserve notes and other circulating notes. Why? How do we know that? Pay attention. Under the provisions of this act, the amount thereof shall be equal to more, no more than 90% of the estimated value of such notes, drafts, bills of exchange, and bankers' acceptances. So deposited as securities. Such notes, what notes? The draft, bills of exchange, bankers' acceptances, deposited as securities, shall be obligations of the Federal Reserve. They're obligated. That's why they're receivable at all national banks. You don't believe me? Watch this. Federal Reserve is obligated. You just heard that? Then it says, procuring the same and shall be in the form prescribed by the Secretary of the Treasury and shall be receivable at par in all parts of the United States. All member banks are supposed to be accepting your instruments. Ladies and gentlemen, did you know that Johnny tried to buy eight yachts? 
15 buildings? Whew. I don't know what Johnny was trying to do, y'all. Because Johnny doesn't understand the system here. You see, they didn't promise to make us wealthy. No, no, you want to get wealthy, you got to go out there and participate in the economy. No, no, what they said is we're going to take care of your needs. We're going to take care of your necessities. That's what they said. That was the agreement. That's what the people agreed to. See, this is a representative government. But Congress is saying when you allowed them to do this, you gave them control over you. No, you didn't. Ladies and gentlemen, when you allowed them to do this, that was in exchange for the gold. Okay, so they took the gold. This was the exchange. That was the currency. Ladies and gentlemen, you're not paying attention. So let me help you. When issued against the security of notes, drafts, bills of exchange, bankers' acceptances acquired under the provisions of the SAC, it says so that you understand such notes, drafts, bills of exchange, and bankers' acceptances so deposited as a security shall be obligations of the Federal Reserve Bank. They just told you that your so-called promissory notes or legal tender when it's to take care of a necessity. The only problem is you know how the Secretary of the Treasury came up with his own policies. All right, I'm going to do you guys a favor. Don't say I ain't never did nothing for you. I got to put y'all on pause this time. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, there's the reason why I'm doing this video. You see, I took down the previous promissory note. Someone had brought to my attention that there were some mistakes in it. So I want you all, there are going to be some mistakes in the words and everything of these documents because I just did it all today, creating six specific documents for individuals. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm supposed to be doing everything all in lowercase. So if you want to do everything all in lowercase, that's up to you. But this was the Presidential Proclamation 2039. So it says, United States Certificate of Authority as authorized by the Presidential Proclamation 2039. Ladies and gentlemen, Certificate of Authority? What the? Oh, I'm sorry. I do hereby declare that I accept the rule rule as banking institution. It's supposed to be role. No, we'll, we'll keep it rule. You can change it to rule if you want, but we'll keep it rule. You want to know why? Because it is a rule. As banking institution during the ongoing and substantiated national emergency that I accept the suspending of all normal banking activities and elect to utilize Section 401 of the Federal Reserve Act as amended by the 1993 or 1933 Congress on March 9th, referring to Section 18, Paragraph 6 of the Federal Reserve Act and Section 4 of the March 1933 Act and page 78 through 83 of the Congressional Record, the first session of the 73rd Congress, standing as irrefutable evidence as to what the law is. That's why we add all of that, ladies and gentlemen, because they cannot rebut it. It's unrebuttable, unrefutable. Why? Because we have the Congressional Record plus the Acts. So there is no ambiguity as to what the law is supposed to be. The statutes at large of the United States of America for 65th Congress, Session 1, blah, 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 suspending provisions relating to property transfer, vested interest, enforcement, and penalties, credit, money, credit, assessment. And this is the wonderful section that talks about the alien custodian. But guess what it says that you all should have paid attention to? It says right here, when like effect, as if he or they respectively were duly appointed by the enemy or ally enemy, creditor or obligee, the president shall issue to every person so appointed a certificate of appointment and authority of such person, and such certificate shall be received as evidence in all courts within the United States 
whenever any such certificate of authority shall be offered to any register, registrar, clerk, or other recording officer, federal or otherwise, within the United States. Such officer shall record the same in like manner as the power of attorney. Now, why? Let's see if we can get it understood. Ladies and gentlemen, it says, and such record duly certified copy thereof shall be received in evidence of all courts of the United States and other courts within the United States. Why is that statement there? Well, United States Presidential Certificate of Authority, as authorized by Presidential Proclamation 2039. Look, ladies and gentlemen, this is the result of 2039. The president did what in 2039? Did the president not give you the authority to act as a banking institution during such holiday, the Secretary of the Treasury, with the approval of the president and under such regulation as he may prescribe, is authorized and empowered to permit any and all such banking institution to perform any and all of the usual banking functions? This is a certificate of authority, people. This is done in a presidential proclamation. Sorry. It's not what I said. It's what he said. And so I put that on the record, and they just have to rebut it, and they can't. Now, that's the one document we're going to be putting up. Sorry, uh, the puppies are in there with their mother. Let me, uh, let me pause that. The puppies are in there with their mother. It's been a very hot day, and I want to, I can't leave them outside because it was a hundred, and three degrees today, but it felt more like 108. It will be 110 on Monday. These pups will only be a week old, and I don't know how I'm going to help them because I got to leave at least twice next week. And that's going to be interesting. Now look, I have air conditioning. I have two air conditioners on this unit. Two, but the air conditioners on this unit, I said, okay, let me plug it into the solar system. My solar system should be able to handle it because it's a 26-volt battery, and that thing, yeah, it plugs into blah, blah, blah. Turned it on, and it blew out four fuses in my inverter. Yeah, too much power. 3,000 uh, 3, watts, and that was too much power. So I have to run the generator to turn on the air conditioning. That ain't working. I am not burning fuel to run the air conditioning. So I will get a window-mounted air conditioning unit. I was supposed to do it already, and I just didn't do it. But uh, Because that's why I got the fan, so I could put on the air conditioning so that the air will circulate. And so I'm going to get a window-mounted unit, and now I have to see if I can get it ASAP, but I don't know. So I got to try, but I will try. All right, that being the case, uh, ladies and gentlemen, let's finish talking about this document. Acceptance of government obligation on behalf and for the interest of the United States. Then this puts the statute at large and the suspension provisions. Then it says a promissory note secured by pledge credit monies assigning all reversionary interest to the United States. And then it lets you know what pledge notes are securities. Or promissory notes are securities, excuse me. It has been held that a promissory note, a promissory notes are securities. And then they go on to say, it has been decided in this state that a bank check is substantially the same as an inland bill of exchange and, in general, is governed by the laws applicable to bills of exchange and promissory notes. So, remember, Congress said that promissory notes are securities. There you go. For the value and consideration of the credits received, blah, 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 I'm going to put this document up. I just created it today. This was created by me. Well, I, I not just created it today. I apologize. This was created some time ago. And so what I did is I ended up putting this down at the bottom because of without prejudice and without recourse and all that stuff. I ended up stepping this in here. But ladies and gentlemen, you want to put your name above the line. You want to be the underwriter. Okay, you don't want to be anything but the underwriter. So put your name above the line. Don't put your name under the line. And then you sign. And then you can put your so-called title. All right.
that being the case, there are going to be three documents that are going to be up. So what I'm going to do, I want you all to pay attention because that's why I'm taking all this time with this video. And for those who didn't stay on, to stay on, we're going to go to PDFs. Now that we're in PDFs, because it will switch over to it now, we are going to go to a legal understanding. Okay, now you see I'm in a legal understanding, and we have the web templates and everything. We're going to open another folder. So what we're going to do is we're going to, no, come on now, give me that, uh, create a directory and enter into it. So the directory we're going to create is called a p r o it's going to be called a promissory note i took down the other promissory note because i redid it so we're going to create a folder called a promissory note see a promissory note and what i'm about to do right now is I'm going to put you all on pause for a second. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, this is a Gerotin acknowledgement. So we're going to put that there. This is a proper lawful tender rebuttal letter. We're going to put that in there. This is the promissory note that we told you about that we redid. I called it a promissory note. It doesn't want me to put it there. You can't put that there, homie. Now, what we're going to do is, because everybody else is expecting this to be here, it won't let me switch it. Uh-oh. I'll, I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll do it. Oh, uh, uh, well, you stay. All right. Then we're going to put, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll put this one here. Um, then it says acceptance of government obligation. We're going to put that in this folder. And then we're going to, this is the promissory note. So we're going to put it back at PDF so that it has the very same link. Uh-oh, what you do that for? Nobody asked you to switch up? Okay, promissory note, acceptance, and the Roosevelt thing. So we put the acceptance and we put Roosevelt. Ladies and gentlemen, with these items, they'll all be up on the website in that folder. I'm doing it now. While we're having this conversation. Do you see? Now, I think I'm missing one. So let's go and check. We have the giraffe and congressional record. We'll put the congressional record in there. We definitely need the congressional record. Then we got... Uh, proper, that's there. Promissory note, not that one. U.S. Federal, that one is there. Acceptance, where you at? Acceptance. Acceptance is there. Promissory note, uh, I don't see the promissory note. This one should have been here, but it ain't. Okay, so that's there. And did we do acceptance twice? Only once. And that's it. And there you go. Ladies and gentlemen, the only thing you guys need and I believe I did put it there, was the Federal Reserve Act. That was the last piece of the puzzle. Okay? With that last piece of the puzzle, you guys should be able to go about your business handling your business. Ladies and gentlemen, you're getting that for free. No, I could have held on to that. I didn't have to give you guys any of this information. Nobody else is doing it. Go ahead. Go ahead and go all on YouTube and see if anybody else is talking about this act, this section, this paragraph. Go ahead. I dare you. You know, I've had a couple people do videos recently, and they've been kind of like pointing in my direction, thinking I'm going to bite because they want me to be upset that they are doing all kind of stupid things. Somebody brought to my attention that there's a young man who has taken our documents from our website, and he has used them, and he has been charging people. For documents that he didn't create, documents we created, he's been charging people $300. He's not doing the documents for them. As a matter of fact, there was something in the document that they didn't know what it was for. So the person called me, the other person called me, the one who didn't appreciate this guy using our stuff, 
And he asked me, what was that for? And I told him, technically, I couldn't talk about it, but we did talk about it because he brought that to my attention. And the young man that I, that he pointed out, this young man actually had some respect for. He's the one that I told you that I communicated with him that 12 USC 95, it has been removed. It's been omitted and moved to a different part of the code. And not to stop using it because the courts have said that that's not valid anymore. And I, I suggested that they stop using codes altogether, that they start using the statute at large. He said in reply, thank you. He didn't cop an attitude. He didn't try to act like he knew more than me. He didn't try to act like he couldn't accept a little bit of, hey, you may not want to use that anymore. And so I told all of you that I had respect for the way that he came back. Look, this is what I'm tired of. I make no joke that I've been doing all of this stuff since the 80s. I didn't start doing no research on no YouTube and no internet. I was going into libraries. I was pulling up law books. I was sitting there for hours. As I told you, when I went into the first court case, I was a teenager. My mother wasn't there. I felt intimidated. So I told myself, that ain't happening no more. Even though I won the case, that ain't happening no more. So what I would do is I would go into the courtroom. Just go in there and I just sat and I listened and I took notes. That's what I did. So when you talk about the so-called people being gurus, and then all of the gurus, I tell you, the Tim Turners, the Winston uh, Trout, all of them are gone. Those are people I respected. Why? Because they were trying to help. The so-called wannabe gurus today, now I'm not talking about Yusuf L, and I'm not talking about Jonah Bay. Because Jonah Bay and Yusuf L are a part of that guru group. Want everybody to know that I have respect for both of those two men. It has never been anything different. I've always spoken with respect regarding both of them, and I will continue to do that. Because they have been trying to help people. Ladies and gentlemen, there are a lot of people out there right now that are just talking. And they're getting a lot of views. And everybody's going over to their channel. Oh, look, there's something new. I just gave you guys the one thing that shuts the whole system down. You see, when I went to Puerto Rico, and this is going to be about an hour long, so you might as well prepare yourself. Matter of fact, we can turn all of this off because we're, you, and those of you, y'all can just about go now because y'all got the meat of the information. The information's already up online, so y'all can go. And you know what? This is a still picture. I need um, I need some flying creatures. This is called Deskscape. I don't like this company, ladies and gentlemen. This company, uh, Stardock. But if you Stardock, okay, I don't need to do this thing right here at all. The version I have, all I gotta do is just keep pressing. I ain't gotta keep moving on, keep moving on. So we gotta talk, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, give me a second. I there is one that I like. And I guess, well, we'll do him, because I, I haven't used him before. And we're going to just sit here and we're going to talk. Because going on 9 o'clock, and I'm about to go lay down. I'm about to go watch me some, we're just sinners, saved by grace, sinners and saints, and send my butt to sleep. Yes, I, I, it's, a, it's a soap opera, okay? It is cheesy, but I, 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 I can do some Sinners and Saints because it is so backwards that it, and it's not entertaining. It's just distraction. I know some people go, oh, you watch Sinners and Saints. Well, I would watch your mama, but, you know, I don't like the channel she's on. Why you have to go there? Because I don't need you judging me. Leave it up to me to judge you, and then you don't worry about me. And we got it all Man, it's all good. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't usually 
do anything other than speak. I don't speak my mind, and that's what y'all don't understand. Many people think, oh, he just said whatever he what he want to say. That's not what, what it is. You guys don't get it, and I've been trying to explain to you. I used to have the ability of being empathetic and sympathetic towards people, watching my tongue being tactful. 1984, I learned tact. I learned the word for the first time. 1984, why? Jehovah's Witnesses. It was a word that they featured. They gave the definition, and we went about, as an organization, being more tactful. I like the word tact. And the only problem is the damage that was caused by the operation to the brain, even though the brain remapped itself, the reason why some of you guys, some of you hate me, some of you like me, but even the people who hate me, there are some things about me they like, and someone can relate to me and some can't, and they think that I'm weird, is because after the damage the doctors caused, my brain decided to remap itself. Why did my brain remap itself? It's a survival tactic. I needed to survive. Other than that, the doctor said, hey, that food going to be a vegetable. Man, you ain't going to be able to eat that vegetable. That vegetable just going to dry rot. So uh, my family was going to sit up there and take me and because I was going to be a vegetable. And so they were going to dehydrate me and just store me for years. And I didn't want that. I had to realize the same thing about my best friend when he died, that if he had survived, he wouldn't have been in any shape to do anything, so he would have been pretty much a vegetable. That wouldn't have been right. Well, getting back to me, I remember two things after the operation. Just that. Just two things. I can do Bible. I can do law. And the only reason why that's interesting is because they are the same. This thing they call law on this planet, they get from the Bible. They try to copy the Bible as best they can. That's what's going on here. So I can hold on to that stuff. We'll talk about the other issue that I was able to remember later. But right now, the law. I had to teach myself how to read again. I also had to, you don't get it. With teaching myself how to read again, I actually had to teach myself how to understand legalese again. That was the difficult part because that's a new language. Well, with damage to the brain, learning a new language, that's the one thing I can't do. But hold on now. Make sure you understand. I don't just have damage to the brain. I have muscular dystrophy and been diagnosed with another disorder that they say it's impossible to have the two, muscular dystrophy and myasthenia gravis. Okay, MG. Ladies and gentlemen, both of these prevent me from learning another language. I cannot begin to tell you how difficult it was for me being in Puerto Rico for four years and not being able to pick up the language. I, I really couldn't retain anything. I, I could retain words that ended similar to English words. That was easy because all I do is say the English word and add a shion, you know, and so forth to it. And thus, but it didn't work with every word. So that left conversations being dull, dry, uh, not working. So what I can tell you for a fact that I know I used to do when I was a teenager was go in court and sit and listen to cases. Well, what you guys don't understand is when it came to sports, that's what I practiced as well, going and watching other teams before we played them to see what they did, to find out who they went to all the time, who their number one main players were. And so, during the 90s, I found myself going into a lot of courtrooms, sitting and listening. And then when they came and decided that they wanted to put me through the system for the first time, I'm the guy, when I go into court and I talk, my case is always last. They don't want to hurt, they don't want me to be heard first, because people will do the same thing with what I say, with what I was doing, what the attorneys were saying. See, I went to 
court to listen to, hear the arguments of the attorneys, to hear how they responded to the judge. So what they do is put me last so other people couldn't do that with what I was doing. It didn't matter. It didn't matter. Ladies and gentlemen, they recognized my abilities when I wrote the plea agreement. They did not read into what I was doing. They couldn't see it. Uh, give me a second. Come here, Penny. I don't know if it's her or if it's Max, but one of them just whined. Give me a second, ladies and gentlemen. I might have to take her outside. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I did tap the headset against the wall, so I just need to make sure that it's still allowing me to speak. Ladies and gentlemen, um, all eight of the puppies are laid out on the floor. Like I said at the beginning of this, I started to just leave them outside because it's nerve-wracking. I hate death, and so if another one dies, that causes a whole lot of problems for me. Don't, I won't, don't need your emails. Don't need you telling me you know how I feel. I feel for you. Don't need it. Okay. I'm just making a statement. Many people think that when they're listening to my videos that they're getting an understanding of me. I don't do this so that you can get an understanding of me. I do this because it's therapy for me. So you're in a therapy session. Is that okay? It sounds a lot better that way, doesn't it? So, ladies and gentlemen, let's take a trip. I would go into courtrooms criminal courtrooms. Sorry, had to take a drink. It's warm. Not the drink. And, no, I don't drink alcohol, idiot. All right. And I'd listen to what went on in the criminal trial. And I'd see what lawyers said, and I'd analyze it. Now, back then, they were just starting to try to stop people from bringing recorders into the courtroom. So I bought, because that's what I did back then, an MP3 player that had recording capabilities. They can't stop you from listening to an MP3. And so I bring my MP3 player in there, and I'd listen, and I'd record the entire session. And I'd go back, and I'd listen. So when it came time for people asking me questions about this or that, the reason why I knew the answer, because I'd already heard the answer. I already knew what they should do because the court would say, yes, and because of this, we have to do this. So I knew what the answer was. Just that simple. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm sitting up here doing videos, explaining everything. Yes, 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 it may take time for you to get to the end. But the problem is, look at that journey where you're getting to experience that. The reason why that is, teaching technique, the reason why that is, is so that when you're confronted, when you're asked questions, when you're put on the hot seat, your response is automatic. You don't have to think about it or nothing. They can't trip you up or nothing. Why? Because you've had it explained to you, and then you went and listened to that idiot known as Redress Right, or you went and listened to Eon's videos, where he told you that you need to Pay attention. That you need to go and read the statute for yourself. And you did it. Well, now that all of you have reread that statute, reread that paragraph, and it says that that interesting, pay attention, bill of exchange or promissory note has the exact same purpose as the one issued by the banks. But when you go back and you listen to the video I did two videos ago, you'll see that that's the new money. What's the new money? Bills of exchange, promissory notes. That was the whole purpose. See, they couldn't just take your gold. <laughs> Do you guys not get that? They had to give you something of equal value. They couldn't just take your gold. So when they took your gold, they took all of your value. That included your homes, and all of your other property. That's why it represents a mortgage. 
Not that you need to pay back. What are y'all doing? It's a mortgage that the government has to pay back. Stop looking at it the wrong way. Go back and read. It's backed by 100% of the nation's credit because it represents a mortgage on all of the property of all of the homes of the people in America. Yes, it represents a mortgage on those properties that you have against the government. But you didn't notice that. Nobody, see, I told you all in 2012, y'all need to be foreclosing on the government. Yeah, I know, 2012. Look at how long ago that was, almost 10 years. But nobody paid attention. I haven't been giving you guys anything new. I've been telling you guys everything that's already been there. It's just that you can't get it all at the same time. You think you can. You th I want it now, I want it now, I want it now. You think you can receive it all at one time, but you can't. Because it took you this long to get the understanding. Even right now, you're still not getting the fact that you can write a money order and pay your bills. Because those are necessities. Well, what happens when they, 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 they... That's the first question that people always ask. What happens when they don't do what they're supposed to do? Then you file your complaint and you sue them. See, the problem is you guys are not suing them. And those of you who are trying to sue them, you're suing them in the wrong arena. Who are you supposed to be suing? Well, you don't sue the telephone company. Please. It's not their fault. You sue the United States government. Because you didn't read the act. It says receivable and redeemable. So if they refuse to receive and the United States doesn't do anything after you file a complaint, then the United States becomes liable because it's a government obligation. Ladies and gentlemen, the Federal Court of Claims. It's your first stop. They can't say that this is not the law. That's a lie. Because we know it's the law. This was their intent. We have the entire record. This was their intent. But see, even though there's a lot of words in that act, I pointed out to you the exact portion that speaks about what we are talking about. And if you guys do it right, cha-ching. Now, some people, look, all of you who have mortgages, SACOM at the beginning of August is getting ready to do something. And we're not, we can't explain all the details to you. Lord have mercy, we can't explain all the details to you. Because if we did, we have too many people. Look, we were in Lamar County, Georgia. And we were following documents in Lamar County, Georgia. We just chose Lamar County, Georgia because I knew somebody who lived there. And eventually he was getting over on people and taking money from people and I stopped talking to him. Don't hate him. Don't dislike him. I just didn't like him overcharging people. And I tried to help him, even paid money for him to get out of jail because the police came and arrested him. And things didn't work out. Don't hate, don't dislike or anything. The money I paid, I told him he didn't have to pay me a dime back. And he hasn't, and I'm not holding anything against him. I'm not demanding that he, please. I told him at the time, this is coming from me. Because he needed to get back home to his family, and he was able to. So we went to Lamar County. We got our documents filed. Everything was going fine. Then there were those people out there who were buying our packages just so that they could duplicate what we were doing. Now, it, it's okay. I told people they need to take what we're doing and improve on it, make it better. I told people. I say that to people all the time. The only problem with that was, ladies and gentlemen, they were trying to mimic exactly what we were doing. They didn't know that we had already called Lamar County. The person filing the documents, we had already spoke to him. Because that's how I do things. We created a rapport. We told them, this is what we're doing. We're not doing this or that. We're just doing this. And he says, no problem. Send them to me. I'll take care of it. And he did. We had a couple of problems, and he took care of it. No problem, ladies and gentlemen. We got everybody. I have a whole stack of stat packs sitting right next to me. 
from what he did. Well, these other individuals were trying to duplicate what we were doing, sending them to the same place, not knowing that we were including a cover letter, a cover letter that you all never saw. Yeah, I know. That's what happens when you try to copy what somebody does and you don't do your own research to find out what's necessary. And that's all people did. They didn't try to improve on what we were doing. They were trying to do exactly what we were doing. Look, since 2012, how many people have you heard talking about trust and foundations? I announced to everybody that we were starting the Securities Acquisition Trust Commission. Even paid for my corporation to be established in New Mexico. For some reason, I cannot even find that filing in New Mexico to this day. But anyway, that was 2012. I told everybody about the Securities Acquisition Trust Commission. That's why 2016, I told you we were getting started. Told you guys that that was the plan. We were doing trust. And then now we got all these people trying to do the same thing trying to show people how to do exactly what we're doing. So I understand that there are people out there who respect me, who respect what I talk about. They know I know what I'm talking about. If I didn't know what I was talking about, I wouldn't have lasted so long. People say, oh, no, he talked about such, such, and he was wrong. And they proved he was wrong. But what happens is, because I put this information out, the system comes after me, and they arrest me and put me in jail. And the first thing... Sorry, I promised myself I was going to stop using that word that starts with um, nigga. But these ignorant ones, the first thing they want to do is they want to talk about me. Yeah, if he got arrested, must did something wrong. That's why they know you only get arrested when you do something wrong. Just like the guy who ran out of the car. He must did something wrong. That's why the police shot him in the back. Uh-huh. Mr. Dwight, when they killed him, when the officer, oh, no, my gun went off. Her gun did go off. She didn't shoot him on purpose. I, I looked at the video. There was no way in the world she was faking that. However, a person still lost their life. So if, if it was me defending her, then I would have defended her on saying, even if that's the case, this was a mistake. She had no intention. This was not racism. People tried to make it out to be racism. She wasn't being racist. She was doing what she was trained to do. She had her gun out. And sorry, some of those officers allow their guns to have a quote-unquote quick squeeze trigger because they want to protect themselves. They don't want to die. They don't want to be that statistic. Well, ladies and gentlemen, must have did something wrong. Ladies and gentlemen, traffic infraction is not an arrestable offense. The only traffic infraction that's an arrestable offense is if you are endangering the lives of others. But having a broken license, uh, tell light, or having, hold on now, having the wrong license plates on the automobile. Now, there may be a statute that says if you have that, they get to impound the car, blah, blah, blah. Ladies and gentlemen, that's illegal. If a person has the wrong plates, and there were a couple of issues where Hertz had reported, and even U-Haul reported vehicles stolen and failed to correct the record, and people have gotten arrested because they failed to report the vehicles as being recovered. And they switched the license plates to another vehicle. And individuals have gone to jail. Some people have died. Because the police, when they pulled him over, you know, he fit the description. Thought he had a weapon. Turns out it was a cell phone. You, you, you ever heard them do that, ladies and gentlemen? Sorry, how are you going to mistake a cell phone for a gun? Well, it was dark. Yeah, 12 o'clock in the afternoon. How are you going to mistake a cell phone for a gun? You're a police officer. You see guns every day. You put one on your hip every day. How you are going to mistake a cell phone for a gun? Look, ladies and gentlemen, if a police officer can mistake a cell phone for a gun, then that means there would be one murder after the other 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 murder. After the other murder at, oh, that's right. It already is. And they used, they thought he had a gun and he had a cell phone. Um, what's I think his name was Stefan. 
I don't know. The guy in Sacramento forgot his name, and I'm sorry about that. But he's in his backyard talking on his cell phone. He ain't bothering nobody. He's talking to his baby's mother. And he's talking outside because it's a private conversation. And the police come in the backyard and they shoot him and kill him. But it's been years and people, we forget about these individuals who the police do that to. You see, I've always had the notion to want to help people. That's why I would go and sit in those courtrooms. Because I'd also sit outside the courtrooms and people would tell me about their case. And after I give advice to one person, another person would come up and ask, ladies and gentlemen, I don't need your approval. Throughout my life, those people who I gave advice to and who followed it and who ended up walking out, who ended up going home, who ended up saying, man, that's exactly what I wanted them to do, and they did it. And I would say, I told you so. Ladies and gentlemen, there's a game changer now. I did the instrument. The instrument that we just put online, that promissory note, that one's to the court. That one's for paying the filing fee. And the bond. Say what? The, the filing fee and the bond. Remember, your promissory note is the same as cash. The courts will only accept cash or check or money order. Well, guess what? You had better accept this or you'll be violating the law. Like I said, the information is a game changer. I was in Puerto Rico, and this is back to the conversation we were supposed to have. The reason why I took this little monologue. And the officer, I forgot the officer's name too. That is a shame. But the officer said to me, he says, can I talk to you for a second? And I said, okay. Pulled me to the side. Now, you know, you're not supposed to, in, these, in, in certain jails, you're not supposed to speak to the officers alone. Because the inmates think that you're going to snitch on them. But the officer came over to me and he says, uh, the inmates in Puerto Rico, many of them didn't speak. English, so they didn't know what we were talking about. He spoke Spanish and English because that was a requirement of the officers that worked in that facility. The officer said, what is the deal with you? I said, what are you talking about? He said, I just came out of a briefing. He said, your picture is on our briefing wall and Mr. Castellas' picture is on our briefing wall. Castellas is the son of a judge who was accused of murdering his girlfriend. And I said, oh, really? And I, I laughed. <laughs> I said, that's interesting. He said, well, they said that the information you have could take down the entire system. I said, I know. I said, but I'm not trying to take down the entire system. I said, I'm one of Jehovah's Witnesses. I couldn't take down the entire system because that would go contrary to my God and the instructions he gives his people. I said, all I'm trying to do is get them to do the right thing. He says, and his words to me were, well, you need to be careful. I said, I, trust me, I am. And he, every time I do some grievance or paperwork or help somebody with their paperwork, he'd look at me and he'd say, man, didn't I tell you you need to be careful? He was letting me know about the staff and the staff trying to set me up. And I understood, but I trust my God more than I trust men. Ladies and gentlemen, said that the information I had could take down the entire system. I'm not trying to take down the system, but I will tell you part of that information is the information I just gave to you. Let me say that again. Part of that information is the information I just gave to you guys on video and the documents I just prepared for you. All you got to do is study what was written. Understand what was written. You see, the unique thing about it is SACOM is going to be helping people with certain cases in the future, especially mortgages. And we already have our templates. Now, it's okay. People can try to mimic it and all that. They don't have me. As I said, I will be testifying as an expert witness. When I tell you that I've been doing this for this long, 
for a reason. That's why I tell you that. Because there's no judge that can challenge me. They can try to talk about me all they want. But see, if you read anything where a judge has said anything about me, they didn't do that about me when I'm on a so-called witness stand. They won't let me testify. Well, when are you going to get into it? Oh, no, because I'll be coming in as an expert witness because I'll be following the claim. We're going to be doing a class action. Those of you who want to be a part of it, the only thing is, if you want to be a part of it, you have to be at the beginning stages of foreclosure or pre-foreclosure. In other words, where you just can't pay it anymore and it's just starting. Okay. That's what we're going to be talking about in August. The complaint will be filed in August. Why? Because we need certain court sessions to take place. I, Ladies and gentlemen, I need to be honest with you. I had to wait until the Supreme Court was formulated like it is now. I had to wait for this. I've been waiting for this for over 20 years. Rehnquist, he his court was not the same. They did a lot of things that should not have been done. A lot of people don't like Roberts. Don't matter. It's not Roberts. Roberts and the other so-called conservatives, man, that's the type of court people like me want. Why? They can listen to this all they want. A conservative court is going to follow the law. Even though they might look for a technicality to get around it, that's where people like me come in. We kill the technicality. Just what you all don't get, the paperwork that I just put together was rebutting their presumptions. That's all I was doing. That's all it does is rebut their presumptions. That's why you have the Congressional Act, you have the Congressional Record, you have Presidential Proclamation, and you have the Federal Reserve Act. That's a preponderance of evidence. They cannot refute that. So they have to shut up. That's what I'm doing. I'm doing the unrebutted thing. Remember, it's a rebuttable presumption is what the Supreme Court said. Well, the way you rebut that presumption is by saying, oh, no, <laughs> you're talking about Security Exchange Act. No, this is under the Federal Reserve Act. Under this act, this is legal tender. Yeah, this is used for the same purpose. That's what we're doing. Now, there are some other points that we're bringing up that I can't tell you here. But we're going to do that for people in September, and I, there is going to be the 50%, whatever we take on this, the individuals who sign up for it will get 50%. The Defrauded Homeowners of America will be a part of this because what you all don't know, Defrauded Homeowners of America, I hope you guys are listening. I told you I was doing a class action lawsuit. Now, the arbitration has been done. So still getting the tax credits for that. Just bear with me, please. Some of you are getting the tax credits and you are departed the Fraud Homeowners of America, but you're going to get more than that. So just be patient with me, please. <sighs> okay, let's get back to the conversation. The, the Fraud Homeowners of America are going to be at it with this group. But the main portion of the people who will be a part of this will take 50%. That's going to be the agreement. I'll do a video on it. I'll explain it all. I don't mind. And I'm not going for the court dismissing anything because I will appeal this and then I will sue the court. And I'll sue the court in the proper court. See, the court is only immune when the court does what the court's supposed to do. When they don't follow the law, the court has no immunity. It's just the wrong people have been bringing up these arguments, and you only get to see the cases where people lost. So, I want y'all to pay attention. I'm imploring all of you to try this. I read the Constitution for the State of New Mexico in 2012. Constitution for the State of New Mexico, I read the judicial power. Because, you know, I'm a very big person on judicial power. Where it comes from. And the Constitution for the state of New Mexico says judicial power shall be vested in one Supreme Court. Then it talked about inferior courts. Ladies and gentlemen, let me explain that statute to you that, uh, that Congress wrote. When it says the judicial power shall be vested in one Supreme Court and in any other inferior court as ordained by Congress, that's where they messed up. Because once you establish the judicial branch of government, 
guess what you just did? You just separated it from the congressional branch. They have no judicial power. People say, well, they can appoint judges. Yes, they can select how judges are appointed, but they don't get to create any more courts that have judicial power. They have no authority over the judicial power. Judicial power can only be conveyed upon a party or an institution by the Supreme Court, which is why the Supreme Court has to swear in their officers. That's where they receive power. Nobody pays attention, but it's okay. So when Congress created those inferior courts, that's exactly what they remain to this day, inferior courts. So what I did in New Mexico is I realized this, and so I wrote a letter to the Supreme Court. And I had my complaint, and I attached it. And I said, hey, Supreme Court, y'all are supposed to have judicial power. Now I'm here in this state, and I'm, I, all I see is these courts that have EIN numbers. They're all corporations. Well, I don't want to be in a corporation. I don't feel like having an administrative trial. I want what I have a right to, and that's a judicial branch trial. And that court didn't write me back until after they sent my complaint to a judge that was 80 miles away, two districts away from me, and the court told me that the case has been transferred to that judge, that all future communications was to be handled through that person. Ladies and gentlemen, I was in the process of moving from Puerto Rico, I mean, from New Mexico to Puerto Rico. I didn't have time to handle that case. I was just trying something. Guess what? Nothing has changed. And you can feel free. Brett Jones against the state of New Mexico. That was the lawsuit. You can feel free to go look it up, 2012. And it would be, his name was John Adams. Yeah, he had sunburn on his neck. Yeah, he sunburn on the neck. I, I called him a sunburn necker. What? He was a redneck. And that's why I didn't want to be dealt. I didn't want to be bothered with that idiot. Sorry, his name was John Adams. I'm judging him by his name. If you judge a book by the cover, then you judge a look by the lover. Hope you soon discover. Ladies and gentlemen, Look of Love, one of my favorite songs of all times. And I still don't know who sings it to this day. Every time I learn it, I forget it. Don't email me. Don't text me. See, I have to do that because people will email me and text me. Uh, there was this one person who kept emailing me. I told him I don't do back and forth. So he would ask questions. And again, I don't do back and forth. So he says, well, you said you don't do back and forth. Really? In an email. Then he does another email. And he talks about, well, I know how much you hate people. And so, really? Interesting. Then he does another email where he suggests that, uh, made certain comments about Jesus being the uh, Lord of hosts. Now, most of you don't know how slide of a comment that was. Every, all of you know I'm a Jehovah's Witness, and if you didn't know, then that means you ain't been watching my videos, so you need to go someplace else with that. You need to miss me with that. Stop it. I'll let you out in a second. Penny, go lay down. Go on. She wants to get back in here with her children, and... I'm talking to y'all for a moment. I'll go out there and get her in a moment because she's going to be in here for the rest of the night. Uh, but she needs to be out there getting some air and some water and some food because they're going to suck her dry. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this gentleman, I wrote him back and I said, first of all, you don't get to do that. You don't get to make these sliding comments and bring in religion knowing I'm one of Jehovah's Witnesses and think that you can get away with that. Then I went about and I told him, I said, first of all, if Jesus was Lord of hosts, then why is it that he hands the kingdom back over to his father? Scripture says he's Lord of Lord and King of Kings, but that's respecting the earth. Didn't pay attention. There's only one king in heaven. There are not three kings in heaven. Lord of Lord and King of Kings is respecting the earth. But it's okay. People don't read. Remember, he's the king of 
Israel. Are you coming to establish the kingdom of Israel at this time? Is what the disciples asked him. He was the son of David. He said, my kingdom is no part of this world. That's what makes him king of all kings of the earth and lord of all lords of the earth. Did he not say that he was lord of the Sabbath? Interesting. <sighs> At no time did Jesus ever say, I am the lord of hosts. Uh, the lord of hosts means lord of armies. And that is the title given to Jehovah throughout the, oh, the Old Testament? There ain't no such thing as the Old Testament. It was stupid man who called it old and new. It's just called the Bible. One of them is called the Hebrew and Aramaic scriptures, because that's what it was written in originally. And the other one is called the Hebrew and Greek scriptures. Well, technically only Matthew was written in Hebrew, but there you go. So, that being said, I had to let the young man know. And he claimed he understood. But he kept coming back and forth. I said, I don't do back and forth. Apparently, he didn't hear me the first four times. And it just got to be irritating. And when I say irritating, I do mean irritating. So finally, when he told me about me not liking people, okay, there you go. And I blocked him. Ladies and gentlemen, when I say don't do something, and y'all want to take it upon yourselves to do it anyway? When it comes to my stuff, y'all must be out of y'all. I mean, <clears throat> excuse me. Y'all got something else coming because it ain't ever going to be like that. All right, ladies and gentlemen, those of you who stayed around until now, now you get the bonus information. Yeah, that was just designed to get rid of those ignorant people, you know, the ones who don't want information. They just want access, and they just want remedy, and yeah, we, we don't need those idiots around here. So let me let me help you out. Y'all ready? Ladies and gentlemen, let me see if I could explain it this way so you get it. Congress, with the May 12, 1933 Act, told you all that they were there to take care of your necessities. Okay. What you didn't know, but you've heard me say it. You're supposed to be discharging every single promissory note, every single debt, every single promissory note you've ever written. You're supposed to be doing a 1099 on it. Yes, you can do an OID on it. I just showed you proof that it's money. It's currency. Yes, you're the original issuer. You're the payee. They're the payor in the United States is the drawee. Shh. Don't tell nobody. And there's nothing the IRS can say because you're going to rely on Section 401. Yes, you're going to see a lot of people doing a lot of videos talking about this because I just sat up there and gave them a way out. Well, ladies and gentlemen, do your research first. Don't just do it because you just heard me point it out to you. I'm just telling you what the possibilities are and how if you rely on that act and the information that I just provided you, there is nothing anybody can do to stop you. Because if you act within the law, you don't get greedy. You can help offset all debt and discharge all debt. That's what SACOM is getting ready to start doing on a regular basis. That's what AmeriLegion is doing. We are discharging debts, people. But we're not discharging debts like all these other booty companies. Look, I'm going to put it to you like this. Several people have worked for SACOM especially there was this one lady that the only thing she was at SACOM to do was to get information so she could start her own stuff, do her own thing, like Heavy D and the boys. And so it, it I had to let her go. I mean, hey, that's what Teddy Prendergast told me to do. So I had to let her go. Then there were a couple other people who worked for us and even a couple people who worked for the other organization that I started that somebody tried to take over that I had to implode from the outside. I had to implode my own company because of some idiot thinking that he can outthink me and outsmart me. And all he had to do was be reasonable and fair. See, he got upset that I wouldn't let him use me to 
bring revenue to the organization. He wanted to pimp the people. And I told you guys, I'm not going to ever let anybody pimp you. Nobody's ever going to come to me to make money off you. That's why I don't do advertisement with Google. That's why I don't let them pay me for videos. Yes, they owe me a whole lot for videos, ladies and gentlemen, all the ads they put on my videos. But I get my money from Google a different way. I'm not, I'm not concerned about Google right now. Like I said, I did that video changing the policies, terms, and conditions of the agreement with Google. And if you pay attention, if you listen, go to satcom 911com go to the terms and conditions. You're not, it's not binding you to no agreement. Just go to the terms and conditions and read how that contract says that if a person wants to recontract or change the terms and conditions of this contract, such is not allowed. This contract is a perpetual agreement forever. But it's a fair agreement because all it says is the parties agree to do what they said they're going to do, and that's it. But when parties start acting janky, that's the best word I can use, then they deserve everything they get. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, because you get to write promissory notes, y'all should be paying y'all taxes with your promissory notes. You shouldn't be paying no taxes with no FRNs. And you should be letting them know, sorry, these promissory notes are equal to the same value, par value, of that note. And since taxes appear to be necessary, then you, by law, must accept this. You're part of the treasury. And if they don't, then you follow a complaint with the comptroller of the currency. Ladies and gentlemen, you were never supposed to be accumulating and building more debt. Now, I did the video showing you the professor. So let me tell you something else. Yes, 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 yes. I could have been talking about this stuff for years, but you wouldn't have gotten it by now. So I waited to the end of this video. Probably won't talk about it much in the future. I'm just giving you the information. You saw the professor saying that the people are creating more debt. Why? Because the bank takes your promissory note and it creates a deposit account. It deposited into the account. So I'm going to give you two tidbits here. Why don't you create an institution, ladies and gentlemen? Register it with the bank, create an account and start depositing promissory notes. Now, you can't just deposit any old promissory note. There has to be actual value and consideration. Ladies and gentlemen, there has to be value and consideration, so why don't you become a depository institution, not under the FDIC, but under Presidential Proclamation 2039? Why don't you become a depository institution under Presidential Proclamation 2039 and start receiving deposits? That's what all of those individuals talking about being trustees this is what they're trying to do. They just don't fully understand what they're doing. I can tell it because I can listen to how they're talking about it. Sorry, I'm a little bit upset with them because they are trying to hide from the people what they're doing. But any one of you can do the same thing. And what you do is you take that promissory note as a deposit. And you contact the Treasury, just like the Act says. And then you get the monies from the treasury, redeem them according to the rules of the treasury, follow the act. The treasury has policies, rules, and procedures for this. And you give them the loan. And you repeat, 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 and you have conditions of the loan. It's a promissory note, a promise to pay back. Okay, you cannot be deceptive because if it's me, I'm discharging the loan, so they ain't got to worry about paying me back, but you can't do that. That's illegal. So I'm letting you know that so you can avoid it. Okay. Now that's dealing with that aspect of things. I'm trying to remember the other one that I said I was going to mention to you guys. There's so much information to help people. But again, this knowledge is here inside this head of mine. I don't do one-on-ones. I do the consults. I try to help people through the consults. I try to educate them. I try to I spend three hours with people from time to time trying to give them as much information as possible so that by listening to what I'm saying over and over and over again, they can stand on their own feet. They don't need to call me to find out what do I do next, what do I do next. There's a young man who listened to one of the videos and he actually did what I suggested. And I had a consult with him. And so he, during the consult, he asked some questions and he did what I suggested and it worked out for him. So I just sent him. Something I haven't sent you guys. I sent him a document that you guys won't see. It's SACOM. But I sent that to him. said, here's a bonus. Why? Because he tried it out. 
There's a young lady who just contacted me. She just sent me two documents. I think the documents are very important. I'll take a look at it and then I'll share it with you guys because that's why she's sending it to me. But I will be in contact with her shortly. Why? Because she's doing exactly what I was expecting for people to do, to share certain types of information. Just that simple. To share certain types of information that can help everybody, not just yourselves. Now, with the information that I've given out about your monies being legal tender and having the same value as Federal Reserve notes and National Bank notes and blah, 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 some of you are going to mess it up for everybody else. And I know it. I've known it for years. That's why I've not been giving that information out. People, that's why I stopped talking about the hour style money orders because that's all people wanted to know about is the hour style money orders. Ladies and gentlemen, you want to get rid of your debt? No, look, hold on. I didn't do 1099Cs until this year. Did so many 1099Cs, my credit rating has changed. Okay? For the foundation. Foundation hasn't been doing anything, but because of the 1099Cs, the credit rating has changed, improved. Why? Because we're discharging debt. We're helping to reduce the national debt. That's what AmeriLegion is helping people to do. Nobody is sitting up here trying to be a rebel. Nobody's sitting up here trying to be an enemy of the United States. So people come to SACCOM, people come to AmeriLegion, people come to SAA. They come to all of these organizations because of me. I know that. The organizations know that. My name is the only name that's out there, with the exception of SAA. My name is the only name that's out there. It's my reputation that's on the line. That's why I'm here. That's why I am insisting that they run the organizations exactly the way that they were designed to be ran. There is no rebuilding the house that Jack built. There's no remodeling. You might move the furniture around, but we're not bringing in no new furniture. Sorry, ladies and gentlemen. What I'm trying to say is, I'm not going to let anybody pimp you. I gave my word. That's why the Legal Redress Commission had to go. I don't care if some of the members who stayed there despite knowing what that idiot did. Here's this video, and it pisses them off. I got one finger sitting in the middle of my hand that you can come sit and spin on. Sorry, ladies and gentlemen. Um, very upset with those individuals because they had no loyalty. They had no loyalty. They had no respect for the organization. That idiot who took over the Legal Redress Commission was robbing people blind, charging them exorbitant amounts. And when they got in trouble, he'd leave them hanging. He's the one that was the reason why Francis, now I will say Francis played a little role, but he's the one whom helped and assisted in Francis being held in jail for two years. That idiot, probation in jail. And when it came time to help, he did not. But no, wait a minute. No, no, no. He was also responsible for another person ending up in jail for 11 years, who eventually got nine years probation and is still on that probation. Yeah, he, the one who took over the legal redress, oh, he called it the Legal Redress Right Commission. Lord have mercy. It's called the Legal Redress Commission, TLRC. It hasn't gone any place. That's why Redress Right is back. It hasn't gone any place. I'm just taking my time. They can do the Legal Redress Right Commission and start it up again, and this time I will sue. That's my name. You don't get to come up and say, oh, well, no, this is Walmart stores. Yeah, yours is Walmart shopping centers. Yeah, okay. That's my moniker. And I never let it go. See, I never turned the organization over to anybody. And I'll never turn any of these organizations over to anybody. All of my organizations are trusts. All of them, they're trust for a reason. 
because I don't want anybody sitting up here. You guys have heard the stories. People's life savings gone. Ladies and gentlemen, I just need you all to be a little bit more patient with me because the disorder coupled with the muscular dystrophy coupled with today, the heat index must have been extremely high because I know we're still, and I'm going to check my phone, but I know where we are right now. I know we are still in the 90s. Guaranteed. Oh, no, sorry, 86 degrees. So I guess it wasn't guaranteed. I said, give me a minute, all right? Hey, Penny? Okay. Hold on. Hold on. All right. Penny is letting me know that she wants to come inside to the pups, and there's no reason to torture her like that. Um, Penny, this has made her mature a great deal. And like I said, I don't want to lose any of the pups. They are lab and pit bull mix. These are the only pups she'll ever have. She will never have another pup, that I promise you. And I'll keep them here for about four weeks, and then I will start giving them away. Uh, I've already have two people who are asking. Uh, we have five boys and three girls. Somebody asked me, what, what, how many boys are they? I told them, I don't know. That's their private area. I ain't got no time to be checking their private area. So I ended up checking today, and five and three. And the thing about it is, there is one who is just like Max. And Max is, God, Max is so much like me. It's pathetic. And this other one, I haven't named him. I'm not going to give him any names for about a week and a half or so. I got to see. I don't care if somebody's going to be adopting them. They're still going to get names from me. But I got to see what I want to name them. You see, I'm going to stick to my tradition, uh, how I named Freedom, just by somebody saying, oh, so I guess he wants his freedom. And, no, well, I said, oh, I guess he wants his freedom because he was trying to crawl out of my arms. And she said, oh, is that his name? And I looked at her, and I paused for a brief second, and I said, yeah, that's his name. And that's how my dog became freedom. And if only you guys knew freedom, um, everybody who met freedom, that was a one-of-a-kind dog. And I miss my dog. I miss my dog, and the people who killed my dog had better be glad that I'm one of Jehovah's Witnesses, and I don't have a problem saying that. All right, so with that being the case, uh, that's the situation with these animals here. Ladies and gentlemen, some of you are going to appreciate the information. So that's why Eon, the persona Eon, doesn't do videos anymore, because he understands that there are just people out there who are just too selfish. I have one guy who heard me say in the video, hey, you guys are not even sharing information, but how many videos has Eon said that people are not sharing information and talking about how they benefited and how they, um, you know, how things worked out and, and how, how they accomplished this and accomplished that? Nobody. But I know the money orders have worked for people because I filed the money orders in cases. Why? Because they said, you can't do that. That's illegal. And I filed it in cases. You can go and look at the cases right now. You'll see the money orders. I made them part of motions. I was following money orders. I told you the very first day, December 27th. It could have been the 28th, but was it the 28th? I think it was December 28th. Yeah, because it was the 27th that they arrested me at night. December 28th is the morning they brought me into court. December 28th, when I show up in the court in Puerto Rico before Marcos Lopez, the BI, uh, anyway. Uh, magistrate and Marcos Lopez I think he might be a judge by now or something because he's an idiot he's one of their puppets uh, what's this well, what does it look like well it says money order well then that's what it is okay the court notes it and places it into the or files it into the record okay all right all right Penny one moment ladies and gentlemen I've been following money orders in case after case after case. I filed it in Francis's case. I filed it in my case. I've been following in case after case, civil cases, criminal cases. Why? Because I needed to prove to all of you ignorant people. I'm sorry, those who say that you can't do it. need to prove to all of them that they don't get to tell me what I can and cannot do. Okay, Penny wants to. All right, Penny. Okay, okay. 
she's getting impatient, so let me go out and get to her. Hey, y'all have a good day, all right? I got to go. Bye.